Hey guys, GunpleFan15 here, and today I'm doing my review of the Master Grade Hyakushiki version 2.0. Now, I got this uh, a couple weekends ago when I was over in Pensacola for Pensacon. Stopped by the Hobby Town USA over there and got it for around 80 bucks. And I gotta say, it was pretty much worth every penny. Uh, what sold me on this was just the gold and the fact that it's not glossy, but it's not flat either. It's kind of like a satin finish to it. It was really, really cool. Um, the other cool thing about it is that about 95% of the gold pieces are undergated. So when you cut them out, you don't have to cut right against the piece. Just, you know, cut a little bit far away and then up underneath it is the rest of the piece. You just cut that out and it's great. You can't see any of the numb marks in anywhere. And the pieces that do have the numb marks on them are the beam sabers. And of course, you know, those are around so, you know, the they're just going to show, uh, like right back here, it'll have a little bit of a numb mark, but other than that, really none else. Oh yeah, and the, his antenna has a little numb mark on it, but oh well. Uh, but other than that, it's really, really cool. Uh, the only customization I did to this kit was the uh, the blue parts. They were a flat blue, and they didn't really go with the rest of the kit. So I was talking with my buddy, and we decided that you know I should just paint them, paint, just paint that piece. Blue, uh, a metallic type blue, and the paint I used was a, a Testers One Coat Lacquer Star Spangled Blue. It's got a little bit of a metallic finish to it, and it's not too dark, it's not too light, and it goes really well with the rest of his gold. I uh, use that on his backpack, a little bit on his torso, and there's a small spot on his beam rifle up here that has it on there. Uh, as far as articulation goes for this kit, you know, it, it being a master grade, yeah, it has all your standard articulation. You now his uh, his head can move the full 360. It can go up and down pretty far. Um, shoulders, you know, standard movement there. Get a little bit of play up here. The rest of them can, you know, spin forward and backward. Uh, they they clip on to his arm, so they're not um, they, there's not a peg going through it to the torso. They just clip on to the top. Uh, arms, double jointed, of course. Uh, hands, you get one set of hands. And they're the, uh, open and closing kind. Each, each finger is individually jointed, so it can move independently from each other. Torso, uh, torso can move back pretty far, and move forward pretty far, and side to side really well. Uh, a lot more mobility there than on most kits. Bring them forward a little bit. So you can see him better. There you go. Um, this cockpit, this cockpit hatch opens up. Let's see if I spin around, back around to it. These two doors right here, the gold pieces, they slide out, and the gray piece folds up, and that's how you get to the cockpit. My only complaint about that is these pieces are very loose uh, on the uh, the rail in there, so every time you move them, they're gonna slide back and forth. But other than that, it's pretty cool. Uh, the whole skirt, front skirts, move up and down, side to side, back and forth. Side skirts, up and down, a little bit of uh, forward and backward motion. Back skirt, up and down, and this piece right here can slide up and down. That has the uh, beam sabers attached to it. Legs, um, you know, all pretty much standard movement everywhere. You know, double jointed up here. His feet are on uh, their own separate joints, and they can bend and come to a point like so if you can see that and um you know side to side also as cool as uh right here uh this piston every time you move the foot it goes up and down so that's pretty cool uh the other cool thing about this kit is the leg can actually come down uh it's a little mechanism up in here i get to it this this little ball it can come down further maybe like another quarter inch or so so his leg will extend further down, which is pretty cool. You can get that, and once you do that, uh, his leg can, uh, I don't know, I guess, be straighter. I don't know. Uh, anything else for articulation? Oh, yeah, his backpack. His bind, I'm calling them binders, I'm not really sure what they are. But his binders up here, uh, they're on their own little joints, so they can move uh, forwards and backwards, side to side. And... Um, up and down, and 
right here, these move too. So you play there, play like that, like that, and forwards and backwards. So pretty cool. Uh, as far as weapons go, you get two beam sabers and two beam effect parts for them. Beam effect parts are these uh, yellow beams right here. And I like the way that they connect uh, into the beam saber handle. Most times with the beam sabers, you know, it's a, a solid uh, beam and the uh, handle is just a flat circle and it connects into there and it just looks like all one giant piece. Versus this, where it kind of gets a little bit big here and then it gets small again and where it connects into the uh, handle, the rim right up here is wider so you get a little bit of a I don't know what the right, right word is, but I don't it. I don't know the best way to describe it. It just looks cool. Um, it looks more realistic, I guess, more like a sword. Um, like I said, you get two of those. Uh, you get his clay bazooka right here, and his beam rifle right back here, and. His beam rifle and clay bazooka both clip on to his backpack up here. Clay bazooka connects on to this piece here, the beam rifle through a similar piece on the front. Um, the way they connect into the hands, let me just go ahead and pull this off to show you. Okay. Instead of having like uh, the hands that have the peg permanently attached in right here, the hands and the weapons both have these little clips right here. You get the same one on the hand, and the hand piece goes in the bottom, this piece goes on the top. That way you can be held in either hand. That goes down. In either hand, and it closes up really well. It's pretty sturdy. So, you get that. Same thing with the clay bazooka, same thing with uh, the beam sabers. They all have those little clips. Like I said, this just hooks right back on up in here. Da, da, da. Come on. Yeah, that's good for right now. Alright. And other little details. Let's see if I can zoom in here. You can see right here on his hand, there's a little tiny gray piece in there. And... I guess that's for when he does his move to do that and shoot out uh, the wire that he uses. I think it's a communication wire or might be a net. I'm not entirely sure. I can't I can't remember Zeta that much, but I just think it's cool how they went into that much detail to replicate everything on this kit. So good job there, Bandai. Come on, camera. There we go. All right. Um. As far as uh, stickers and decals go, you get uh, one set of foil stickers that has, you know, your eyes and the camera pieces on it. Um, you get three set of eye stickers. You get one that has the, the black and the red eyes. You get one solid black and one uh, black with red lines through it. I'm guessing that's to signify the camera turning on. And uh, the these stickers, it says they're supposed to go onto the uh, inner frame piece. And then there's a clear piece that goes on top of it. And they give you three different sets of clear pieces. You get this one right here that would have the uh, one with the lines on it. And this piece right here that's supposed to have, um, I guess, his his other eyes. Probably should have put that one in there. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. But I would think if you want to uh, use the other stickers... Instead of having to peel off the sticker off the inner frame piece, you can just place them on here and then put this over it because I just have the, the solid piece, solid clear piece covering up the stickers on the inside. So you get that there. It's pretty cool. Um, so you get, you get the foil stickers. You get one set of regular stickers here. And you get one sheet of dry transfer stickers. Now, uh, so you get two actually well you get two sets of little figures you get two of quattro standing and two of his cockpit version not entirely sure why they decided to do that but 
and that's what you get. Um, and you also get these pieces here. These are pieces that go to the blue pack, I believe, and and according to the instructions, of course the blue pack is a P Bandai version, so you'd have to purchase that. But it does give you instructions on how to install the blue pack on him. I'm not sure if the blue pack comes with instructions, but I know it said that um, there's pieces in that that are not included. So you would, ha you would have to have the Yakushiki to have these. So I'm not really worried about it because I'm not getting that thing. Um... I think that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, if you're gonna get this kit, go for it. You know, there's really no customization you really need to do. I mean, if you want to paint the gold, you can, um, but I, I wouldn't, just because it looks pretty cool in my opinion. Although one one other complaint I do have, the gold pieces, you need to be careful with them. Otherwise, when they're rolling around in the bags. There is a chance you'll get some scratches on them. I have a few scratches on some of my pieces, and you know, unfortunately, there's really nothing you can do to prevent that. You know, you get the kit; they're all in the plastic pieces, and of course, you have the, the golds on top of each other. I don't know why they decided to do that, but oh well. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna be entering this into our competition today, so wish me luck on that. Uh, anything else to do? do I, th I think that's. Pretty much it. Alright guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe for more content. Uh, drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. As always, there will be a link in the description to our Facebook group, Mississippi Gundam and Gunpla. Go ahead and check that out. And I will see you guys next time.